Welcome to Own Your Career, Own Your Future, a Schneider Electric podcast where industry experts across different fields from around the world share on trending topics, insights and career advice on how the next generation can contribute to creating a more digital and sustainable world. This show aims to be a trusted voice for students and early careers who are looking to kickstart or advance their career with Schneider Electric or in related industries. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Own Your Career, Own Your Future. Today, we're back to discuss supply chain careers. But Moen, this time we're approaching it from a different angle, right? Um, Could you maybe shed some light? Yeah, that's correct, Tanya. In today's episode, we're exploring supply chain careers from perspective on the next generation. We'll explore why Schneider Electric Supply Chain, a fast-growing and evolving landscape, is now a compelling choice for young talent. And despite tradition, it's become a hub for the next generation. And we'll uncover what motivates them, debunking the myth that a supply chain degree is a prerequisite. Well, I'm excited to hear more, especially following on from the supply chain episode we covered at the start of season two. And to our listeners, feel free to check this one out after the episode. But for now, join Moen and I as we discover how Schneider Electric aligns with the younger generation's passion for sustainability and making a significant impact on the world. We'll delve into the achievements, challenges, and future steps of our young talents, providing valuable insights and advice for those contemplating a supply chain career or seeking more alignment between their values and their job. So yes, Tanya, let's jump straight into it. Our speakers today are Law, Yuan, and Pamela, who are working for Global Supply Chain at Schneider Electric. Hey, everyone, and thank you so much for being with us today. Let's start with some introductions. So, Lor, maybe you can go first and introduce yourself from where you are based out of and what is your role in Schneider Electric? Yes, thank you. Good morning. My name is Lor Kona and I'm based out of Paris, France, and I'm leading human resources for global supply chain of Schneider Electric. Hello, I'm Yuan Xu from Shanghai, China. And Yuan in my name means far away in Mandarin. I'm a sustainability engineer for the safety, environment, real estate team in China. Hello, everyone. I am Pamela Tabasco. I am from the south of Mexico, and I moved to the north of, of the country looking for better career opportunities. Since the south of Mexico is has never been an industrial area, so now I am working as a customer satisfaction and quality manager in one of our biggest plants in North America at Monterey, which is an asthma and a smart factory. So my job is to ensure that we produce and manufacture products that comply with the customer standards and are safe and provide clean energy management. Okay, that's amazing. I think we have a lot of diverse crowd today. So hola, ni hao, and bonjour to all of you. So nice to have all of you with us today. And uh, at Schneider Electric, supply chain is a fast growing and fast changing environment. And traditionally, it is like, you know, it isn't always an area that the next generation of talents explore. So Lord, uh, why do you think it's important to have talent like Pamela and Yuan in their roles? And for that matter, any young talent in supply chain? Well, First, the integration of new technologies and digitalization journey are completely transforming supply chain function. And to drive this innovation journey to support the transformation, we need people from a variety of backgrounds who will bring new perspectives to our industry. And diversity is really key. And among other things, that means that we need to attract young people and their new and fresh ideas too. And those past years, as you know, supply chain across sectors have suffered from countless disruption, shortages in both raw material, labor, global crises like COVID or even natural disaster. And those events have prompted us to accelerate supply chain innovations and digital transformation journey. And we overcame those challenges and showed great, great resilience by constantly adapting our ways of working to the situation we were facing. And these difficult times have created new opportunities and highlighted the importance and crucial role of supply chain in every sector. And really all together, we are building the next generation of supply chains and we are ready to answer the challenges that the future will bring. And we need for sure to uncover, address the hidden risk, improve, enhance sustainable supply chain and take advantage of the latest innovation. And all those challenges are really creating exciting new opportunities for early talents. And 
And one of our goals is to double the number of job opportunities compared to what we had in 2019 for next-gen talents by 2025. And we are already working on it. And those past months, 74% of new hires in supply chain were early career talents. And for 30% of them, they got already a frontline manager position. Wow, that's incredible progress, Laura, and what ambitious targets we've set. Um, and I really liked how you mentioned that the next generation is really here to bring new perspectives to to supply chain. And speaking of new perspectives, let's hear from Yuan and Pamela, why don't we, about why did you choose to apply for a job at Schneider Electric and more specifically why supply chain? Many people early in their careers don't really think about supply chain, or at least it's not front of mind when they're when they're thinking about where to go down in their career paths. So I'm I'm curious to know what motivated your choices. Okay, so um, I guess that a little background will help, but um, I graduated with a bachelor's degree in industrial engineering, and also I have a master's degree in business administration. So in my career, I have been working in different quality roles, from quality audits to continuous improvement and quality behavior. Um, and I have started my career in supply chain by applying to a program dedicated to early careers uh, that was looking for land manufacturing and agile solutions and opportunities. So I received a lot of support and individual coaching, and I immediately fell in love with the supply chain business. So uh, when I joined at Schneider Electric uh, later in my career in 2018, um, after I saw the company proposal for gender equality, green economy and circularity, and, and also for career solidation, which was something that I was looking for. Um, I decided to apply because the company looked like a good fit to me and the company believes, you know, so um, all the commitments were aligned with mine. And I like that it's not electric was empowering young women through their career paths. Yes, thank you, Pamela, for your introduction. And uh, for me, funnily enough, starting a career in a supply chain was a total coincidence. Um, I chose to study chemistry for both my bachelor and master degree. I applied for my current position two years ago uh, without knowing that it was a supply chain job. At that time, I was looking for jobs that fit my background, uh, reaching out to a lot of chemical companies, uh, consumer goods companies, even IT companies. I was kind of study oriented. I didn't have much work experience. So this is my very first job. When I first started, I had zero knowledge in how supply chain works. But uh, Schneider Supply Chain welcomes people from various backgrounds. So different functions, different factories, distribution centers. These people have their own characteristics and ideas. And I just love to meet and work with this dynamic and diverse team and see how we can put everything together and uh, make something fascinating happen. Thanks, Pamela, and thanks, Yuan. What I'm hearing from, from both of you are... Your answers is there's a lot of diversity involved, right? Whether that's gender diversity or whether that's, um, I guess, a whole host of experiences and meeting people from all walks of life. Um, and Laura, I wonder from your perspective, would you say that there is a conscious effort to foster diversity within Schneider? And it also seems like, you know, you don't really need a degree in supply chain necessarily to come into this function and thrive well for sure and you know what you and what you just explained on your story is a good illustration that a supply chain degree is not a prerequisite and there is really a variety of functions in global supply chain it's a very very diverse landscape and uh, you know for more uh, standard fields like supply chain planning logistic industrialization to more really more modern fields like iot data science ai and machine learning and of course, support function like HR and finance. And we are driving significant transformation. And this is enabled, again, as I was saying at the beginning, by new technologies with which evolve fast these days. And it means that we have much more diverse profiles in supply chain than before with different backgrounds. And our global supply chain is very global and regional and local at the same time. We have uh, more than 150 factories in 40 countries. Um, nearly 80 distribution centers in about 40 countries as well, and uh, for sure global hubs uh, across the world, including in France, Hungary, US, China, India, and so on and so. So uh, whether it is 
cultural diversity, gender, generations, or uh, sexual orientations. We welcome all types of diversities and really value the knowledge and expertise of our people and value the experience as well. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And being inclusive is indeed one of Schneider Electric's core values and highest commitments. And with whatever we have been discussing so far, I would like to dive deeper into this topic, uh, which is the company culture, right? And Yuan, Pamela, we can see that you're both a part of a new generation of employees that have different priorities when it comes to work. So what are you looking for in a workplace and how Schneider Electric met your requirements and expectations? Uh, yeah, for me, it's quite simple. So what matters the most is what the company has done so far and what it plans to do in the future. So that's why when I look for a new position, I always go to the company's website and look for details. I found out that many companies have yearly sustainability reports. So when I first read these reports, I thought these were very fun and meaningful. They kind of review the company's ambition regarding climate, uh, environment, social responsibilities, and you can easily compare one company with another. So looking back now, I think it was the starting point of my career. I want to help and benefit society with my work, meaning if a company business is good uh, for human beings and uh, if they have a good reputation, a positive local impact, then I can see myself join the adventure. And now I'm working on how to make the company's commitments happen. So for example, I'm the country biodiversity leader. That means I need to make sure all our sites have local biodiversity actions and also remove use of single-use plastic. I want to highlight that we have an amazing global group called Sustainability Ambassadors, where employees from different functions, different regions share their sustainable programs. I just love this group. Very nice atmosphere, and uh, besides biodiversity, I'm in one of the team to set up end-to-end -end CO2 calculation method for all our employees. I like our discussions, although we have very different backgrounds, and I'm really looking forward to the output. All these programs and projects that I mentioned are great opportunities for early careers, and because we can meet new people, uh, work together, and share ideas as a Candidate, I think I look at the company's culture and the internal opportunities it gives to talents. Sometimes you just need to wait until different rounds of interviews to get a better understanding of the company. So that's why it really stands out if the company has a well-organized interview. And it's even more memorable if you have interesting and maybe challenging conversations with different people throughout the whole recruitment cycle. So it's a two-way selection process. The company chooses the candidate by evaluating its skills, but we also assess the company at every stage of its recruitment. So all these factors help me decide, and in the end, I know if I can see myself pursuing a career in this company. Well, John, I totally agree with you. I would like also to add that I really think that I place high value in company cool. I would not be in a company, as John is a describer, that is not taking actions matching to my beliefs. So I feel like this... This feeling is heightened by that I am a woman working in a male-dominated function. So I think that we always need to feel safe as a woman in the industry. And I need to understand and to feel that there are equal opportunities for all, no matter what. And just as Jan is mentioning, I, I try to evaluate whether the company is trying to positively impact the society. Getting to know that you're in a place that is contributing to our society is uh, not only on a company level, it's one of the most important things for me. And maybe if I may, and I uh, really I appreciate you sharing this, uh, you and, and Pamela, and, and I'd like to come back to the gender diversity topic uh, by you, Pamela. And really, Schneider is a purpose-driven company, and diversity, equity, and inclusion are really central pillars of our culture. And it's well, it's correct to say that for a long time, supply chain function has been considered as a male-dominated sector. But here at Schneider Electric, we are really challenging gender bias in the workplace, and we are supporting all women who want to build careers in technical jobs, and those commitments are miserable. For instance, this last quarter, 47% of our new hired in supply chain were women talents. And as HR, it's really our job to make sure that we give equal opportunities to both men and women, including leadership roles, and that we foster women talents in every function. And we see really uh, 
many, many women succeeding in our supply chain started by supervisors' role in our manufacturing environment and moving to plant general manager roles. And we're more and more women leading our factories or DCs, which is great, great to see. Thank you, Law, for that wonderful insight. And Schneider Electric has a strong commitment when it comes to sustainability, right? And we know that candidates have been taking an active interest in this topic for a few years now. And I would like to ask our two early talents what they think about this growing interest. And do you think your generation cares more about sustainability? Well, of course, you know, so I would like to share an experience from my career. I started my career in the oil and gas industry as part of the quality audit roles that I was uh, mentioning before. And it's a complicated sector, I would say. Something did not feel quite right. Uh, working for the oil and gas industry made me realize the massive impact the oil based fuels have on in our environment. So it was a decent job overall, but I never felt that it was a perfect match for my beliefs. And as I said, I, I realized that I wanted to work for a sector and a company which has a positive impact on the world. So just like me, I, I feel like other people from my generation have this ambition that our world, our world is facing a lot of challenges and we live in an isolated world and economy where the population is growing and has a tremendous impact on our environment. So we all worry about the uncontrolled consumption of our resources. I think that sustainability for a generation, it's not only important, but it has also become the key. We all need to understand what impact we can have and how we can contribute at our individual level to build a better world. But most importantly, we need to understand what industries can do. So what they must do and need to actively take part in sustainability initi initiatives and make sure that the industries respect these commitments. There is a collective consciousness that needs to be embedded Worse, it starts with questioning ourselves. So mostly we need to question the business and the industries because they are the biggest contributors. We are the current and the next generation that has the responsibility to put this change going and moving forward and that we want to see in the world. So I think it's great for a lot of generation ones. And this is truly what we generally want. Yeah, speaking of generation more broadly, I would say that our generation thinks of sustainability as a model. Um, can I build a sustainable career? Uh, is this company sustainable in the long run? I think those are the questions that we as a generation have in our minds. So for me, building a sustainable career is about how you invest in yourself in the long run. And it's also about developing more and more skills that will support the changes. And it's not just about getting another degree. Uh, it's more about cultivating our own mindset. Uh, for example, digital skills. You do not have to be a coding master to have a digital mindset. You just uh, need to be curious and try to be involved in the discussion and understand how AI, artificial intelligence, big data work, and how they affect our environments. I think keeping up with the latest technology, being curious and watching the trends is how our generation is going to support the transformations that we need to drive in our world. So to be honest, for now, maybe many young people are worrying about the future. I'd like to see our world from a bigger business cycle point of view. Uh, we might be in the middle of a depression stage right now. At least that's how I see it. But you can see from the right side that it is during this depression stage that some of the world-changing technologies are coming into our view. These days, we can think of AI and clean energy as the next groundbreaking technologies. I'm always optimistic for the future. I believe humans can overcome the problems we're facing right now. I love the positivity, Yuan, and I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, in my own two years of being at Schneider, I've seen how we've evolved, and although that's a short period of time and the company has been on a very long transformation, or decades long at this point, and with COP28 having just gone by, it's it's incredible to see the, the role that Schneider's playing on the world stage, bringing attention to some of the new technologies that you alluded to, but also reiterating the fact that solutions exist and we can leverage them as we're going along, as we're getting closer to our, our collective sustainability targets. I just want to come back to the conversation with you, Lore, and learn from your perspective in engaging and interacting with the next generation of talents. 
Do you think that sustainability is at the center of their core values in terms of what they're seeking from a career or what they're seeking in their own personal lives? And that's what they really want to bring to work. And how is that going to change how we work? Well, definitely. Uh, and for sure, sustainability is now a core and I would say central concern for uh, our early careers. But I think we have seen uh, people across age groups realize just how important sustainability is and it's not going away. And companies really need to ensure that we are clear and concrete in their sustainability actions and uh, track and return in early careers. Companies need to ensure their purpose and uh, clearly defined and meaningful. And, and that's something for sure we focus on at Schneider. And and as you know, our purpose is to um, empower all to make the most of their energy and resources and uh, bring in progress and uh, sustainability for all. And uh, we truly act for a climate positive and socially equitable world. And uh, and it's really something that really resonates with young people. And uh, and of course, our supply chain plays a, a critical role in this uh, meaningful purpose. So uh, everyone across our organization and in our supply chain can definitely connect to it. Okay, I couldn't agree more with you, Laura. And uh, Pamela, you are, uh, you are at different stages of your career, right? And uh, looking back at uh, how your career has been, what are your biggest accomplishments so far? Yeah, my biggest accomplishment. I would say I'm proud of the opportunities that I had and seized. So within maybe only two years, I had the chance to host for many online sharing sessions. And it's kind of surprising for me because I'm still new to the company. I hosted the energy saving contest for China just two months after I joined the company. So, so far, I would say the uh, supply chain sustainability days is the most thrilling and fulfilling event that I've ever attended. It's a global online event that consists of two sharing sessions and over a thousand people are connecting. Experts were invited, so our team chose circularity as the main topic. We explained the concept of circular economy, shared the best practices in Shredder Electric, and what employees could do to go further. So during this uh, preparation, a lot of great ideas popped up. I love the momentum, the energy of the groups we had. Also, I made the teaser video myself. I wrote the whole script of the event. So being host was very exciting and very engaging. That's an experience very different from my normal statues. So I could play a different role and it was really fun and refreshing. I also, I was team member in some digital innovation projects. So for example, I've used Power Automate, uh, which is a platform for some automation of uh, recurring tasks. And that was the first time that I had to use a digital tool and put it in the business process. It's a handy tool. The platform uh, collects answers and pictures from online surveys that we called leadership safety engagement. And then it saves the safety observation results and sends to people who want to check the information. And this not I may mean, not sound so difficult for some experts, uh, but it was challenging for me at first. I had to learn how to use this tool uh, from zero and I've designed all the flows, uh, wrote the commands and codes, tested and also fixed bugs. So I've checked a lot of online video tutorials, but also I improvised a lot. And it's very satisfying to see the outcome, the flow leads to the exact results that I wanted it to have in the first place. So, um. For me, just as Jan, I, I think that I cannot just focus on one goal or achievement. And I would like to focus on two. And, and definitely, uh, I would mention that becoming a manager uh, at an early age in my career is one of my greatest accomplishments. It's been six years, close to seven years now. But um, since the day that I joined this company, I felt the push to, my, to take my career to the next level. I got plenty of mentors, training exposure and most importantly I got plenty of opportunities uh, the trust my managers my sponsors had in me and in my ideas mostly is a great accomplishment and not only for me as an individual but also for the community that I work and I can say that there is a second project that I would like to mention that makes me also feel really proud uh, and is that I've been able to change the packaging strategy that we have in one of our products so when you're in the supply chain a lot of things uh I stay the same and it's in us to push for that change to happen. So after 20 years of using that single-use plastic foam packaging, that was a non-recyclable one, 
uh, we switched to a 100% green local option. So I drove this transformation. And, and these are the kind of ideas, projects, and achievements that the company let me express and also led. So it's truly really meaningful and it had a real impact on my personal development. It's great that you too can have full ownership and make measurable changes. And I guess it's not always easy to drive transformations across the board. Would you say you're facing a lot of challenges those days in your work? Well, definitely. Um, I would say that the challenges that I had faced are more related to my management style because you have to transition from an individual contributor into a management role in, in my case. And it's always bringing interesting scenarios to the table. So, for example, when when you manage people that have over 30 years of experience or you sometimes might have an entry-level talent, you know, so uh, you need to identify which approach to make the most of our teams. I think that the key is to trust which each person in my team individually and we will get the best outcome that, that we can get from each of them. Trusting in each other's, uh, their abilities, their decision making and supporting each other, that helps empower them, you know, so that will always bring the best possible results. Um, one of the key takeaways that I have and I have learned is that if you let your team be strong and take ownership, you know that you, you're you going to be facing challenges, but even make some mistakes. Although it might be a rough path, uh, if we let them be comfy, them, uh, we're going to find solutions and empower them. Yeah, thank you, Pamela, for your experience sharing. Since I'm more junior, so my own challenges are not so much about managing teams. Um, I'd say it's more about uh, the digitalization of supply chain and maybe the impact that those transformations will bring to my work. So right now, every department, every function is involving our team, the safety environment, and the real estate team is also seeking opportunities to introduce more digital transformations, which is great. So for example, we talk about AI cameras to detect dangerous behaviors, uh, to check if there are fire risks, and also safety heat map to actively monitor safety risks on sites. Several months ago, I was appointed as digital transformation contact person for my team. So this opportunity brings me a lot of exposure. Although I have experience in writing codes, it's still challenging to follow up in business. There are so many platforms, uh, so many abbreviations. I'm still trying to keep up. And so far, that's my biggest challenge. Uh, but on the other hand, it's a great experience. Um, communication is always the key. There are many inputs suggestions and ideas that come from different people, different teams, I can start to make a clear roadmap of how our team can drive this transformation. This is still in the work and I really look forward to arranging our own workshop and meeting people face to face soon. Well, it's really inspiring to hear about your experiences and significant roles you have played with such determination. I can imagine it wasn't always a smooth sailing. Uh, but having stated all of this, uh, talking about the future, what is the next step for both of you? What would you like to achieve further? Yes, future. There are a lot of exciting things happening in supply chain and a lot of technologies to develop, like cutting edge carbon technology, so maybe AI. So I want to be a part of this thrilling journey. I want to contribute and witness all of this. Although the future is uncertain, I like to embrace this uncertainty and I'd like to keep my momentum and I will always remain open-minded, curious, and see what the future will bring to me. And also maybe I'm not the best one to seek career advice from because I'm still at the beginning of my own career. Uh, but in short, I'd like to tell our listeners to trust themselves. You are the masters of your lives. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. And uh, if you feel like you need help or advice from other people, don't think too much. Just go for it. So um, my goals are not related to a specific position, as Jan also mentioned. But uh, those are more related to my well-being which means that I will continue to look for places where I feel really empowered and to make sure that I can develop myself as much as possible, that I can choose my future career and work towards new roles, work with more people from across the globe, but I will always protect my life balance first. And Schneider Electric has been able to provide all of those, those things in this past six years. And so far I feel complete. So I have fulfilled my ambition so far. And now, since Jan already gave some piece of advice, I, I will also give mine. I would say that 
you need to find what makes the most of you and go for it. So don't be afraid of failing. It might sound like a cliche, but it when you fail that you learn the most valuable lessons. And always look for a company that matches your beliefs and stay true to yourself. There are a thousand of opportunities out there, so don't be afraid to try. Try again. And if something doesn't feel quite okay, please evaluate the situation and start over if you need to. So you need to find what motivates you, but also recognize what are the values and the conditions that are non-negotiable for you. And I really encourage everyone that is listening to this that uh, to keep thinking about the future. Let's remember that we are the key and we can be part of, of the change. So we will keep pushing and we will work to build a greener future and a greener industry for generations to come. And that together we will make sure to build a supply chain that cares for the environment. Uh, those were really uh, wonderful insights, uh, Pamela and Yon. And uh, I'm sure our listeners will get inspired by them. And uh, coming back to Lore, uh, what about you, Lore? What advice would you give to early talents who would like to kickstart a career in supply chain? Yes, and I want to come back to uh, what you said, Pamela and Yuan, and it's really about staying curious. Don't be afraid to try new things. And as you understood, uh, supply chain is evolving significantly with digital and technology. So stay connected, stay eager to learn, put yourself out of your comfort zone, be ambitious for yourself. And if you are ambitious for yourself, you, you will be ambitious for a bigger community. So, yeah, I would say this and really uh, reflecting on the stories and great stories we uh, we heard today. Stay curious. Don't be afraid to try new things. Uh, thank you, Lord uh, Yuan Pamela. It was really a pleasure having you with us today on this podcast. And uh, uh, thank you for sharing your sto uh, stories, thoughts and advice with us. I'm sure our listeners would get to learn a lot from you. And we wish you all the best and can't wait to see how you'll transform supply chain in the future. So thank you so much and uh, have a nice day. Thank you. Wow, Moen, I think that was a great conversation that we had with Laura, Yuan, and Pamela. Um, for me, I really resonated with what Laura said towards the end about staying curious and being curious, because that's what it takes to step into uncharted waters and, and be able to come out the other way, um, having accomplished something like Pamela did, right? Being the youngest manager. And I love Yuan's perspective and his positivity throughout the whole episode. Um, about looking on the brighter side, seeing the sil silver lining rather than falling into the trap of just being skeptical and, and, and negative about the state of the world, but finding an opportunity and really acting on it. And again, coming back to what Laura said, staying curious. I'm curious to know what your biggest takeaway was from this conversation. Hey, if you ask me, it was more of how much of great work you can do in Schneider Electric and it doesn't matter what your background basically is. For example, Yuan was telling that he was from a chemistry background, right? And for him to transition into a role in supply chain, which is completely unrelated to uh, what he studied and also excel in the role, uh, just proved that Schneider, there's a lot of possibilities and endless opportunities in Schneider Electric, which can help a lot of people to grow. So yeah, for all of those people who are listening to this, I invite you to work for Schneider Electric. Trust me, it's going to be the ride of your life. Said Moen. And before we wrap up, a big thank you to our listeners for tuning into this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, share and leave your reviews. And we look forward to tuning in with you next time. Bye, everyone. See you soon. Bye. Thanks for joining us on today's episode of Own Your Career, Own Your Future podcast. Be sure to head over to the Schneider Electric Careers page at se.com slash careers to check out our open opportunities and sign up to join our talent community to receive exclusive invitations to events, career tips and company updates. Visit our Schneider Electric blog at blog.se.com to read employees' stories and learn about a variety of career paths. Last but not least, remember to follow and subscribe to the show in Apple Podcast, Google Podcast and Spotify to listen to all the available episodes. While you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a rating or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show.